Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Vertical Church. Glad you are here with us. We're super excited about kicking off a new series on knowing God through. And today, Pastor is going to talk about knowing God through sufferings. And I know a lot of us are dealing with sufferings, and it feels like the more that we try, the, the harder it gets, and the more just gets piled up on top of us, right? Now, the Lord. Here we got good news though guys we got good news because the lord will deliver us god promises us deliverance and he guarantees us a victory right amen now we are reminded in scripture how god gives us deliverance and a promise of it now my beautiful wife is going to read that uh one of those promises right now i'm reading from first peter 5 6 through 11. therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So out of that, guys, resist the devil. Stand firm in faith, right, in Jesus Christ. And then out of obedience, obedience, God will make he's going to make, give us promises and that will be restoration making you strong everyone if you're able to get up off your feet if you're able to, to get off your feet let's do that no distractions guys all right this is between you and god now let's praise the lord on high and worship the one true god thank you god thank you for your grace thank you lord for your mercy Thank you, Father, for the things that you continue to pour out on us during these hard times. Father, restore us, restore our soul, restore our household, restore our country, Father. God, I, we know you provide. We believe that you will provide. And as long as we believe and have that faith, Father, you will deliver us. Father, you can do all things through Jesus Christ. You, you declared that and you made that promise to us. Holy Spirit, we call on you to enter every household right now, enter every home, and just minister to us right now, Lord. Clap your hands, let's worship. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm ready for whatever you want to do I'm moving forward to follow after you And now I'm ready, now I'm ready for whatever you want to do Your presence, your presence is an open door want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Oh, come now, Lord. season your grace has been enough and I believe in that the best is yet to come cross before me my hope on things above and in you Jesus the best is 
is yet to come. Come on, your presence. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Oh, your presence, your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Come on, sing it out. you can call him your friend our comforter our strong tower you're always there for us Lord we can call you friend mindful of me that you hear me when I call is it true that you are thinking 
love me How you love me It's amazing Who am I? And who am I that you are mindful of me That you hear me When I call Is it true that you are thinking of me How you love me How you love me It's amazing It's amazing And I am a friend of God And I am a friend of God I am a friend of God He calls me friend You are mindful of me That you hear me When I call And is it true that you are thinking of me How you love me It's amazing God Almighty.
we just dive into this time of worship, pray you just open up our hearts, Lord, for what you want us to hear. We be still before you. Just lift up your name, Jesus. My comforter, my shelter.
sing it out. Shout to the Lord. And shout to the Lord, oh, me. Let's just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lift up your hands to Him right now. Come on. Every person, every person is watching right now. Lift up your hands. Come on. Let's just worship the King of Kings, the great I Am, the mighty God, the bread of life, the light of Judah. He is the everlasting God. He is God. And there is no other God except Jesus. And we love you today. We give you praise and we give you glory, God. You are an awesome God. We worship and honor you today. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are God. You are God. And we love you today. Yes, God, we love you today. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and amen. We want to welcome you to Vertical Church this morning. What a great joy joy that you are with us this morning and you are tuning in. And uh, if this is your first time watching, we just want to welcome you to Vertical Church. What a really just ex so excited the fact that you are tuning in this morning. Well, we have an opportunity to honor God this morning, especially uh, to all of our Vertical family. It's uh, it's. We have an opportunity to express our obedience to God by giving our tithes. Vertical Church believes in honoring God with our tithes, and so here's an opportunity. And we have different ways to invest through new life. I got a call this morning, I just got to share this with all of you. I got a call this morning, and um, it's really amazing that this person uh, basically gave me a bag of seed bag of seed now it's not literal seeds it's money but it's he called it a bag of seeds and, and this bag of seeds is to be able to just allowing that seed to help those that are in need and, and that really blesses my heart really bless my heart tremendously because this person um, understands that there are many needs right now and he wants to invest in the lives of people and just to show the love of Christ to so many and there is another uh, person who who just really just barely making it and also gave uh, and and said that here's my seed and we have an opportunity to plant a seed especially today and I know that many of us are getting uh, uh, the, the stimulus check. And uh, my wife and I have the opportunity to plant uh, some seeds from this check. A and uh, we're just going to help others with that. And I just want to challenge you, Vertical Family, uh, to uh, some of you can afford uh, to plant those seeds uh, of faith and love and so I just want to challenge you today and uh, together I believe that we could impact and just show the love of Christ to so many and we have an opportunity today and so uh, if you are uh, just uh, if this is your first time investing 
breakthrough in your life. We just want to appreciate you. And uh, we just want to let you know that we value your giving and your investment. And uh, so allow me to pray. Father, we are grateful for the opportunity to invest through a new life. And, and there are so many people today that are in need of help. And I thank God that there are so many people that are stepping up and saying, we want to plant some seeds. And, and, and this week again, we were able to provide some, uh, some bags of groceries uh, to our community and, 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 and able to help so many. And thank you for the partnership of, of other churches like Hope Community uh, that, that have come to partner with us in the KP5. And God, I'm just so grateful that things are happening. You are moving. You are doing a great work. You are using the church. And, and, and you're, you're using Vertical Church and many others to impact uh, so many lives and to show that there is a God who loves them and you are using us we are privileged God we thank you for those that are obedient to give giving their tithes and honoring you with their obedience and bless the obedience of your people we love you today we give you praise in Jesus name and everyone said amen God bless you you stand with me and let us continue to honor God as we sing this next song give me faith and let's just worship Him and honor Him. God bless you.
But you are my hope. I know that I'm losing joy, but you are my joy. And God, I, it seems like I, I'm, I'm, I'm drowning, but I know that you are the one who's going to save me. I know, God, all I need to do is to surrender to your will. Let me surrender to you right now and give me faith, God. Give me faith. Give me faith. Come on. Say that. Give me faith, God. Give me faith. Give me faith, God. Yes, God. Give me faith in the name of Jesus. Come on. Yes, give me faith, God. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Come on. Yeah. Give me faith to trust what you say. God, we give you our life. We surrender to you. You are our strength. You are our strong tower. You are our refuge. Yes, you are. You are our help. You are. You are. Yes, you are. And God, we bless you today. We thank you so much for you. You are good and you are faithful. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, come on, everyone said, amen, and amen, and amen. Come on, give God a clap offering today. Yes, God, we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, music team. Hey, I just want to say this before, uh, I, before I start preaching. I just want to just say uh, a, a big thanks to this team because every week, they come here, uh, and we just know that it has been a challenge, the fact that we can't meet inside our building. And, uh, but I just want to let you know that, man, these people are here every single week for the last five Sundays. And I just want to show my deep appreciation to every single one of them uh, for their commitment in serving God. If you have your Bibles with you, would you kindly open it to the book of Exodus chapter 2? And then we are going uh, to jump to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 2, beginning from verse 23 to 25. And then we're going to jump to Exodus chapter 3, beginning from verse 7 to 10. And the title of today's message, as you know, that we are starting a preaching series. We're calling it Knowing God Through. And today I want to talk to you about sufferings. Knowing God Through Sufferings. There was a gal, uh, well, uh, she really had a difficult life, Fatima. Uh, 
here's a, when she was very, very young, she was raped by her brothers. Imagine, when she was just very young, a, a young age. And, and at age 11, look at this, she was sold into marriage to a young drug addict and pretty much just abused her in so many ways. Can you just imagine for a moment 11 year, when she was 11 years old, she was sold into marriage. And um, when she was 17, uh, her husband divorced her, left her. And she didn't have anywhere to go, and so she went home. She went back home. Well, when she went back home, again, she was raped over and over again. And so out of desperation, she left home. And when she was out on the streets, there was a person who was preaching the gospel just out in the streets. The gospel of Jesus Christ, and as she was walking and just crying and in desperation, she heard about the love of Jesus Christ. And, and this person who was preaching, he, he was preaching about Jesus who came from heaven and, and the fact that he is God and he died for the sins of mankind and he's willing to forgive you. And when she heard that, is it possible, could it be, that this God that this person was talking about is the God that would rescue me. And that day, she cried out to God. And she came up to the person and said, I want this God that you're talking about. And she came to trust Jesus. Fast forward, Fatima got married to a Christian man, strong in the Lord. And uh, the, the amazing part of this story that they became pastors. And they, they, they passed, now they pastor a church. Um, and here's the thing. Um, one day, God called her to go back home. And that was kind of difficult for her to go back home, but she trusted Jesus. But, but during that time, she really had a hard time trying to grasp the, this, this try, trying to make sense of all of this and going to the people that raped her and destroyed her life. And now I'm going there to share Jesus. And she just trusted Jesus, and so she went back home. And she shared Jesus to her family. And every single one of her family, including those brothers that raped her, gave their lives to Jesus. And they're all serving Jesus today. In the book of Exodus, chapter 2, there's a story of another cry. It's the people of Israel that for 400, for 400 years they were in Egypt and they cried out to God. And the reason being is, uh, at the time, God was blessing the people of Israel and they were growing in numbers and they became a threat to Pharaoh. And so Pharaoh commanded all of his soldiers to get all the little boys and kill all of them and to throw them into the Nile River. And so that's, that's what happened. They threw every single little boy into the Nile, but somehow Moses got rescued. And uh, the story, uh, that as we read it, the Egyptians were pretty brutal. And, and they made slaves out of the Israelites. And so they were slaves. And, and the, the brutality of the Egyptians were so intense. And so the people of Israel couldn't handle the brutality and the sufferings that they were facing. And so they came to their senses to finally cry out to God. Just like Fatima cried out to God. There's another cry. And maybe you're, you're here today, you're listening, and there's a cry inside your heart. You're crying out to God. 
I just want to say this, that God hears your prayers. God hears your cries. In verse 24, it says that God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Friends, I just want to let you know today that God is concerned about you. He remembers his covenant that he made with all of us because of what Abraham, he promised Abraham, and we are now the children of Abraham if you have given your life to Jesus. He remembers the covenant he made with Abraham, and we are part of that family. The Bible says that the Gentiles, all of us, are now part of the family of Abraham if you have given your life to Jesus. And so, friends, God hears our cries. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about us. And uh, here, here's how God responded to the cry of the Israelites. Exodus chapter 3. Now turn there. Verse 7. The Lord said to Moses, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. See, God is concerned. What's concerned about their suffering? And he is concerned about your suffering today. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land and a land flowing with milk and honey. And so here, God gives a promise that I'm going to get you out of slavery, out of Egypt, and, and I'm going to get you to the land that I have promised my servant Abraham. And verse 9, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And, and, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. And friends, Perhaps many of us are being oppressed by what's going on around us, especially now with the virus, with the economy, and, and some of you losing your jobs, and, and maybe you're losing a lot more than just losing your job. And, and you're sitting there, and you're watching, you're listening to me, and you're having a hard time getting along with your, with your spouse and, and your children, and, and because you, now you're staying at home a lot more, and there's just a, it's just a mess. And you're pressured with all this stuff. And you keep turning on the news. And you keep looking at social media. And, and somehow you are bombarded with all this bad news. And, and you're asking, is there a way to survive this thing? And you are being oppressed by all of this stuff. And verse 10. He said to Moses, now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I'm sending you. Friends, I want to tell you today, with all the sufferings that we are facing, or we had faced, and we are still facing, I want you to know that God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. The fact that he suffered for you and me, he died for our sake, he paid the penalty of your sin and my sin and the sins of mankind. The Bible tells us, for God so love you, for God so love us, for God so love everybody, the world, that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Friends, God heard the people of Israel. God heard their cries, and God responded to their cries. And so the people of Israel came to know God through their sufferings. They came to know that God hears their cry. They came to know that, that God remembers his covenant that he made with Abraham. God, they, they came to know that God was concerned about their well-being and their sufferings. And they came to know that God sends a rescuer, Moses. They came to know that, 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 that God makes a way. Now, makes a way, let me just park here for a minute, the fact that when they left Egypt, when they left Egypt, now realize this, the story tells us that they went, and they were in front of the Red Sea, and, and Pharaoh changed his mind by letting them go, and so he began to pursue them. And so all of a sudden, 
they look behind them and they see the Egyptians trying to pursue them and then all of a sudden they, they didn't have anywhere to go because they were in front of the Red Sea. They began to cry out again. And Moses stood in front of everybody full of faith, trusting God. And he hit the ground with his staff. And all of a sudden, the Red Sea, the water parted. And they were able to cross the Red Sea on dry ground. They got to the other side. Now, listen to me. They got to the other side. They got to the other side. From Egypt. And all of a sudden, they were in front of the Red Sea. They got to the other side. To get to the other side, your other side, maybe you're saying, Pastor Angelo, I'm in my own Egypt. And it seems like now that, that I made some movement, and now all of a sudden I find myself on, in front of the Red Sea, and I have nowhere to go. But see, friends, to get to the other side requires faith and trust. Because without it, You'll never get to the other side. Uh, I hope you heard me. You'll never get to the other side unless you have faith and trust to see that, that you'll be able to get to the other side even though you might not see the possibility of your situation. Because that's when faith comes in, that's when trusting God comes in, that no matter what, even if I have my enemies trying to pursue me, even though there is something blocking me to get to the other side, I'm going to trust and I'm going to put my faith because I know that God can take me to the other side. Are you with me? I found this out that there are different cries in the scriptures. There are different cries. I'm not talking about a cry of a baby, a cry of an adult, although those are, I guess, cries. But I'm talking about just different cries in the scriptures. There, are, there is a deep distress cry. Deep distress. There's a cry out for help. There's a call with a loud sound cry. And there is a cry for help. And uh, maybe you are here today and you can identify with one of these descriptions of different cries. There's a story uh, in the book of Mark chapter 5. It's a story of Jair Jairus. And uh, Jairus was one of the synagogue leaders. And when he saw Jesus, he, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with them, and he said, Jesus, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. He cried out to Jesus. Cried out to Jesus. And Jesus heard his cry, and he went to see his daughter. In fact, people thought that she already died, and they, there was just a lot of weeping and, and sadness, and Jesus came and said, she's not dead, and, and just ask everybody to leave. I don't need you in this room. Get out of here. And Jesus spoke life to that child, and she lived again. A cry. There's another cry. There was a blind man in the book of Mark chapter 10, beginning from verse 46 to 52, tells us about this blind man, Bartimaeus. And, uh, and he was sitting by the roadside begging. Verse 47, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And look, look, look how people responded. Many rebuked him and told him, be quiet. Be quiet. Just be quiet. But he shouted all the more. 
Son of David, have mercy on me. It's really interesting that the, the words cry out. It's this idea of crying out loudly with an urgent scream. That's what the description of, of the Greek. Using, look at this, an articulate sounds, or shouts, in articulate shouts that express deep emotion. That's how Greek have described his cry out. And so, when, when everybody else have, have said, stop it, be quiet, he shouted all the more. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. A cry. A cry. And maybe some of you are listening. That's where you're at, this deep emotion. Inarticulate shouts, urgent scream, whatever. And guess what? Jesus heard him. And Jesus told his disciples, call him. Jesus heard the man. Call him. And so in verse 49, so they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Man, be joyful. Come on, he's calling you. Be excited. He's calling you. And I believe that God is calling you today. Be cheerful. Be joyful. He's calling you today. Get up. Rise up. He's calling you. And so, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind, blind, blind man said, Rabbi, I just want to see. And Jesus said, go. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Wow. A cry. The fact that you can know God through your sufferings. The people of Israel knew, found out that, that, that they came to know God as one who was concerned about them, one who hears them, one who comes to rescue, one who makes a way. And for Jairus, his cry, he came to know God through his suffering by the power and authority of Jesus over death. And for this blind man, he came to know God through his sufferings by the power and authority of Jesus over sickness, even his blindness. And I just want to tell you today, there, there, there's going to be a lot of voices to tell you, be quiet. And, 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 and so many other things will try to silence you. And, and I just want to let you know that ne nobody can force you to be silent. Nobody. Not the virus. Not the economy. Not your job. Just because you lost your job. Nobody can force you to be silent. Just cry out to God. He is listening. He hears your prayers. Cry out to him even though there are other voices that, that, is, that, is, that is telling you to stop and be quiet. You cry out even more. Cry out even more. But you might say, Pastor Angelo, I, I have cried out to God. But he hasn't sent his miracle or he hasn't healed me. He hasn't done anything. Well, friends, because we got to understand that people do come to know God in so many different ways through their sufferings. There's no such thing as one size fit all experience with God. Um, there's no such thing as one experience with, with God in this thing. God doesn't, sometimes he doesn't rescue Sometimes he doesn't heal. Sometimes he doesn't do a miracle. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he doesn't make a way. Sometimes he's pretty quiet. And um, that's somewhat a kind of the experience of Apostle Paul. 
In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, it tells us that there was a thorn in his flesh. And he pleaded with God three different times. Can you just imagine pleading with God, begging God to take it away? So imagine Paul saying, Jesus, please, this thorn, will you take it away? And Jesus said, no, Paul, I'm not going to take it away. Can you imagine this, this, the disappointment perhaps with Paul? And, and perhaps it's just a, a, it's just a human being thinking, God, I have served you faithfully. I have, you've used me to heal so many. You've used me to do incredible miracles and to perform supernatural things. But you, you're not going to heal me? No, Paul, I'm not going to heal you. And, and the thorn in his flesh is so intense that he came to Jesus a second time. Jesus, please, I'm begging you. Please heal me of this thorn in my flesh. And Jesus said, no, Paul, I'm not going to heal you, son. Can you just imagine Paul asking, why? Why, Jesus? I don't doubt your capacity and your ability and your power to heal me, but why? And Jesus was quiet. His thorn was so intense that and then he came to Jesus a third time. Jesus, please, I'm begging you, please. Please, I'm begging you, please take this thorn away in my flesh. Please, I'm begging you, God, you have the power to heal me. Please take it away. The answer? No, Paul. I'm not going to take it away. But I want you to know, Paul, that even though I might, I might not take it away, and I'm not going to, but I want you to know that my grace is sufficient for you. I'm doing something. And I know you don't like it, but you just got to trust me. I, you you got to trust me. I'm going to help you to fight the good fight of faith. I have a plan and a purpose for your life. Would you trust me, Paul? Would you? In spite of your thorns, would you? Maybe for some of us, that's what God is saying. Would you trust me? I'm not going to take away your suffering right now. But would you trust me? Would you just keep your eyes on me? And just fix your eyes on me? Would you? I'm doing something, son. I'm doing something. My daughter. I have a plan. There are other ways to get to know him. For Paul, Paul came to know God through his sufferings by God giving him his grace that was sufficient for him. I just want to let you know that just because God perhaps is quiet in your life right now doesn't mean he has abandoned you. He didn't abandon Paul, and there's no way that he's going to abandon you. You just got to trust him. You just got to walk in faith. There's just a lot of things that we don't understand. There's a lot of things I don't understand. One of them is why my wife is not healed with her ailment. I don't know why. I don't. Have we begged God? Multiple times. We just don't understand why sometimes it feels like it's quiet. Do we have an option of, of, of putting our fist towards heaven and be angry towards God? Absolutely, that's a choice. But we choose not to. We choose to trust Him. We choose to walk in His ways. We choose to put our faith in Him continually. We, we choose to hold on to his grace that, that is sustaining us. We choose to do that. My wife could complain all day long and be bitter about life, but she, she chooses not to. But do you know that during these times is when Annalisa got to experience 
God's grace and to really understand what it means. And uh, she learned that God is truly her sustainer. Through her suffering, do you know that she fell more and more in love with her Savior? <laughs> you might say, man, that's just crazy. I know. It's crazy. How in the world could you fall more and more in love with your God when you're suffering? It is possible. I see my wife all day long. Through her suffering, she learned what it means to surrender. Through her suffering, she learned to trust God in the midst of her pain. Today, she was in pain. And she laughs. Oh, but I'm blessed. Seriously? You're in pain, and you laugh, and you say, I am blessed. Hmm. So, what do we need to say to God when we suffer or when he's quiet? When he's quiet in your life, what do you say? What do I say when God is quiet in my own life? I got to say, give me faith. Give me faith, God, when you're quiet. Give me faith when, I, when I'm not seeing that you're doing something. Give me faith, God, when I don't see a miracle happening. Give me faith when my wife is not being healed. Give me faith when all of these things are happening. Give me faith, God. Give me faith. Give me eyes to see what you're doing in my life. Give me eyes, God, to see what you're doing in my life. Help me to surrender either way. Give me faith. Open my eyes to see what you're doing in my life. Help me to surrender to you either way. Whether you, you heal my wife, whether you, you do a miracle or not, we are going to surrender. I'm going to surrender to you, and I am going to keep my faith, and, and I'm going to continue to believe that you're going to open my eyes to see what you're doing in my life and in Annalisa's life. Help me to surrender. You know how when a person is drowning, usually those lifesaver people, they don't go after the person, try, try, would try to save them when they're conscious. The reason being is when we are drowning, we tend to panic, right? We, we move a lot and, and we, because of panic, and if, if you go after that person and you try to save them, guess what happens? That person is panicking so bad that, he, that he's going to pull you down and now you are, now you are at risk of drowning and dying yourself. And so what happens? Well, they kind of wait until you're a little bit unconscious. And then they come and save you because you're not going to pull them down. A lot of times, friends, that's what we need to do. Realizing that we're drowning in sin. We're drowning with all this bad news. We're drowning about this virus daily and, and how many people are dying and getting sick. And the economy, the finances, and all this stuff. We're drowning, we're drowning, we're drowning. And we are still fighting when God is waiting for you and me to surrender to him completely. And stop panicking. God is saying, stop panicking. Trust me. Trust me. Fix your eyes. Fix your eyes. I'm the author and the perfecter of your faith. Fix your eyes on me. Don't fight anymore. Surrender. And so, friends, what is... The, the application of this message. Well, fr friends, we get, uh, we get to, we, we come to know God in so many different ways when it comes to sufferings. Some of us, we get the rescue. Some of us, we get the miracle. Some of us, we experience Him and His healing. But some of us, God is quiet. For some of us, it seems like that God 
is not listening. He's not coming to rescue. He's not doing a miracle. But friends, I just want to encourage you with this. That either way, the goal is this. Is that we don't want to miss the opportunity to know Him. Whether Him as a rescuer, whether a, a, a God who does miracles, a supernatural God, an all-powerful God, or a God in the midst of His quietness, His grace is sufficient. That He's got you, the palm of your hands, uh, the palm of His hands. That He loves you no matter what. He's got a plan. And He's got a purpose. So the goal is to get to know Him either way. To get to know Him. That's the point. It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter. However way, we have the greatest opportunity to get to know Him through our sufferings. And so friends, um, perhaps some of you today are watching and uh, you're just struggling, struggling in life. And perhaps some of you are watching today and you don't know the Lord Jesus, the one who created you, the one who came to die on the cross for you and for me and for the sins of the world. He's the one that paid the penalty of your sins. The Bible tells us that no one is righteous, not even one. It, does, it, it means simply this, that you're not good enough and I'm not good enough to pay the penalty of your sin and my sin. That's why Jesus had to come. But God demonstrated his own love in this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's the good news. So what do we do? The Bible tells us that if you believe in your heart, not here, because this is all, the, when you start believing God here, and, and you don't connect the heart, what you have is just religion. You just know about God. But if you want to know God, it's got to come down here. This has to connect with this, the heart, the mind and the heart. So you believe both ways. And then the Bible says, so would you believe that Jesus is the Savior, that is the only one that paid for, your, for the penalty of your sins? The Bible tells us in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say a specific religion is the way. No, he said, I am the way. I am the way. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There are no other truths. Jesus is truth. to give you his life and so friends would you open up your heart today maybe that's a decision we need to make today so would you just if you're ready to do that I would like for you to pray this simple prayer just say Father forgive me of my sins I believe Lord Jesus that you are the Savior the one who paid for the penalty of my sins. I repent of all of my sins. I believe in you, Lord Jesus. And I give you my life in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer today, I would like to encourage you to connect with me personally. And uh, people are giving their lives to the Lord and they are contacting me personally. Because I need to show you your next step. Giving your life to Jesus is only the first step. There are more incredible, exciting ways, steps that, that, that are part of your journey. So contact me personally, and I would like to connect with you. And, um, and friends, before uh, we end our service this morning, I just want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you. Because perhaps you're saying, Pastor Angelo, I get it. I I'm ready to know God through my sufferings. Whether he rescues me or whether he does a miracle or he heals me or not. But I just know that I can know him in his grace and his mercy and his love and, and his strength and everything else. Friends, you can know God in so many different ways. 
So our prayer today is God give me faith. Open my eyes to see what you're doing in my life. What are you trying to teach me? What are you doing, God? And, and, and just give me faith. And then help me to surrender. Help me to surrender. And Father, give us faith. Open our eyes to see what you are doing. And help us to surrender to you. Our desire is to get to know you through our sufferings in however way. That's, that's the thing. Knowing you, knowing God. Know, not knowing about you, but to know you. And so God, I pray that you would help us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Everyone said, God bless you. Awesome. Awesome message there, Pastor. Great job. I know uh, uh, we all need to hear that, right? We all need to hear that. Good job, guys. Um, one, no connect group next week. We are taking a week off. We will not be meeting. So, that's a bummer, but when we do pick back up, we'll be in uh, Philippians. So get excited, get caught up if you haven't read it. Um, get signed up if you aren't signed up, right? Church, remember, surrender. That's that's when you want to change in your life. That's where the change is going to come, is by surrendering to Christ. So join with me right now uh, as we're going to pour out a blessing on you. And this is the same blessing right here that God himself gave Moses and his son and Aaron and his sons to give the Israelites. So open your hands up, welcome the blessing, and accept it. God said, the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And all God's people say, Amen right? Everyone have a blessed week. Have a blessed day. And until we meet again, make sure that you put on the armor of God, wherever you're going, put on the armor of God and uh, just have faith firm in Jesus Christ, right? Until we see you again. See you guys. God bless you.